Speed Paints 2.0 from Army Painter. They're out, they're on the market, and you can get your hands on it now, but is it worth it? Today we're going to take a look into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Speed Paints 2.0 versus Speed Paints 1, and just the general performance of the new colour range and the new formulation. So I managed to get my hand on the Mega Set. Comes with 49 colours and an extra bottle of Speed Paint Medium. I was pleasantly surprised with this. Don't ask me why, but for some reason, when I saw the promotional for the Mega Set, I had a read of the colours that were on there and noticed there were a couple of double ups from 1.0 and for some reason I had it in my head that it was the range of 1.0 colours and some additional ones to make up 49 colours. Happily I was wrong about that and there were only three double ups from the previous version, all the rest of the new colours. Um, and on top of that the most exciting part which I was looking forward to is the one coat metallics. Um, so we'll take a look at that near the end of the video. So today we're going to take a look at the whole range of 49 colours and I'm also going to do about three models um, and this will showcase the real life application of it into an actual miniature model. The three model of, models I've chosen have varying degrees of xenophil prime um, so we can see how well it applies to a very white prime, black prime, grey prime and in between. Stay tuned and we'll have a good look at the metallics near the end of the video. So I've had the printer running using the generic cloak model that I used in the previous video. I've also lined up a couple of models primed in grey, that way we can get a comparison to a slightly darker primer, see how well they compare. The 2.0 range of 49 colours is ready to be applied, including the metallic bronze, silver and gold, which I'm really looking forward to. The three models I have here have varying degrees of xenophil. One's used an airbrush, so it's giving a pretty balanced look. The others are quite heavy and quite light. Um, so we'll see how well those perform as well. So before I get into putting any paint onto the actual model, there's one more important step that I have to do. It's so important, it's even written onto the bottles, and that is to shake. But not just shake, Shake well. So I'm employing the same conditions and techniques that I used when I tried the version 1 colours. I am applying it using a very liberal amount of speed paint, quickly slapping it on from the front, and then I'm layering it on from the top, quite a heavy coat, and then pulling it down the model to the wrinkled robes on the bottom. This will help me to see how well the highlights and the slight pooling of paint works on the hood. I really enjoyed how well it applied when it was being careful on some of the smaller details. Found it didn't really run and bleed as much as the version 1. Uh, not that version 1 is impossible to work with, but it just does run that little bit more. And you can also see a really nice vibrancy as it paint is applied to the primer. It flows really easy off the brush while still maintaining good control in those small detailed areas. The vibrancy of the colour range is great and you can really see an instant pop of colour as it's applied to the model and you can see really good coverage with it. A lot of good control pulling it around I can see how well it applies to the main robe as well as a really great indicator at the bottom to see how well the paint acts when it's pulled into a big heavy pool of paint.
Here you can see the vibrancy of the reds, and admittedly, I love the speed paint reds from both version one and version two. Uh, they seem to really pop with vibrancy onto the white when you're using that really highlight sort of color and onto that high white Xenophil Prime, and it gives a really deep, dark red on those black primes, which gives you that really nice color change from high vibrant to nice dark, deep red. You can see how easy the coverage is, with still a lot of control, pulling the paint around the model. You can really pull it to where you want those deep shadows and pull it away from those high recesses. Um, it is quite workable. So with the whole range painted, I'm going to choose four of the worst performing paints. These are the four bottom performers. Can really see they do look quite different with the grey. Bear that in mind that you can get quite a different look to your colour depending on the primer you're using underneath. But these four that perform pretty badly, being a little bit more careful with the application. Uh, you'll see why when we compare them to the original white version. and four of what I think are pretty good performing paints. Now let's get into the newest addition to the range, that's the Metallics. Admittedly I'm not the biggest fan of the original Army Painter Metallics, uh, with the normal standard acrylic version. Um, I just find it can be a little bit streaky and a little bit patchy sometimes in applying, and you do really need to get that two or three coats on to get that good colour. Also, I'm not that confident with my non-metallic metal yet. So I do like something I can fall back on that actually has some metallic flake to it. And just give that metallic look really quick and easy. Um, the only other way I'd recommend applying metallics, um, actual metallics themselves, is through an airbrush. Get that really quality finish. But these are a great alternative to metallics um, if you're not quite ready for the non-metallic metals yet. You can really see those flakes shining as you apply it and the coverage with just one coat is fantastic compared to standard metallics. So this was the warrior skin, as you can see that cracking, right down to the hood as well, pretty much anywhere that it had pulled into a dark area seems to have cracked, looking at the comparison, on the grey there's no cracking, here you can see there's no cracking, compared to the two, here we have burnt moss, Cracking versus non-crack. 
Caribbean Ocean. Again, you can see that cracking. Not on the grey. Okay, this is a familiar pink. And four of what I think are pretty good performing paints. happy with the finish on this. Didn't have any trouble with the details. This is all just one single coat. Tooth came up really good. The metallics came up really well on that as well. No trouble with details. And I feel the metallics went on really well even when I was detailing the small details. Really seemed to stay where I applied it. Plus it looked great on both the extreme white and the extreme black of the Zenith Old Pine. So my overall impressions into the Speed Paint 2.0, pretty good, really good range of colours now, uh, enjoying the fact that I have the version 1 as well, so I've got a really extended colour range in the Speed Paint. A little bit disappointing to see the cracking, uh, but the good news is the cracking uh, didn't appear on the models that I painted, and with the grey versions as well, a little bit more... Um, care over where you're pulling and directing that paint and hopefully that cracking won't be an issue but it is something to bear in mind especially if you're going to look at ordering the new pre-order now for the complete set. Version 1 still great, um, you can notice a bit of a difference in the way that they dry um, and I think that was part of what the problem is with the cracking is the changes to the formula to help it dry a little bit quicker maybe seems to be the cracking. Uh, looking at a few other people that have had the experience, uh, it might be something to do with the primer. Um, but a little bit more experimentation and we might get to the root cause of it. But all in all, I was able to paint my three models without any cracking, so that's a good sign. Um, hard to say whether I'd recommend them or not. I think compared to contrast paints, they are definitely cheaper and provide a really good uh, one coat alternative. Um, if you're into your tabletop gaming, probably perfect. Get that one coat on, get them game ready. If you're painting for detail and display, then really good as some base coating, um, but yes, it can definitely be enhanced with a bit of acrylic and a few other techniques on top. Um, but all in all, pretty happy. Um, they're a great addition to the kit. And, uh, I'll definitely be using them from here on in. So thanks for the video, hopefully this was somewhat, uh, somewhat informative and hopefully this has helped lock down those decisions as to whether you want to go down the speed paint road or not. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and see more content like this, so stay tuned, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.